darkness covered the land. Jesus hung bleeding and dying for the lost souls of men. He could have called ten thousand angels to take him away from that shame. I am so grateful His grace reached to me The day that love called my name When Jesus died, what sacrifice What love and compassion was shown When He stretched out His hands and said, I love you this much such mercy has never been known. And when he cried, it's finished. Everything changed. I will never forget that day. Understand why he cared so much that he would die upon that old tree. He took my sin and all I had been and made my life over anew. There at the cross his love called to me. Now that same love is calling to you. You ask me what love is. It's a man hanging on a tree. You ask me what mercy is. It's that man dying. much such mercy has never been known and when he cried it's in Praise the Lord, from whom all blessings flow. Let's go to Lord, uh, Lord in prayer. Father, we just thank you, Father, for the opportunity to be here this morning. We thank you, God, for your love, your grace, and your mercy. We just ask you, Father, just give us a good service, souls be saved, Father. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Listen to this. This is what he is. All your ways are good, all your ways are sure, I will trust.
are torn apart. Blessed are the persecuted and the pure in heart. Blessed are the people longing for another star. For this is the kingdom, the kingdom of God. you're with us today here at the Yosemite Baptist Church. Well, it is the friendliest church in the Hill City, and we'd love for you to come and experience what God is doing in this ministry, from the music to the message to the great people in the presence of the Lord. Make it your point to come out with us as we're entering this Christmas season. Come on by 411 Blue Ridge Street, right here in the heart of Lynchburg, Virginia. And we appreciate you so much. We're one block off of Lakeside Drive. We're near the main entrance to Lynchburg College. We want to give a shout out to our friends down in the New River Valley. And we appreciate hearing from you. And we're so glad that this program is a blessing to you. And our friends all over, down in Pulaski, and not only the New River Valley, but in Bedford and Appomattox and Pamplin and all the way down to uh, Blackstone and just uh, everywhere, Rocky Mount the Lynchburg area, all over. We're very thankful that you tuned in, and we're praying that your heart is mightily blessed of the Lord. Today, we're going to be dealing with a subject on blessed. Hallelujah. In the book of Matthew, Jesus talked about what we know as the B attitudes or the attitudes that we should be. Hello, Bradley. Bless you. Those attitudes should be involved in our life, but the first thing Jesus said is blessed. Blessed. See today, God wants you blessed. Now stay tuned for the message. I'm not going to preach it yet. But God wants you blessed. But there are things that you've got to involve in your life for the blessings of God to enter and to be able to use you for His glory. So stay tuned for the message. Enjoy the music. By the way, please come worship with us during the great Christmas season. On the 20th of December, we're having a great big celebration. And we're wanting you to be a part of that. Our kids will be performing. It's going to be a great day on Sunday morning and Sunday night and uh, all the other great times here at Gethsemane Baptist Church. Also visit us on our internet at itgm.org and also visit us on Facebook at my name, Carlton Duck. We'd love to have you. I know you'll be greatly blessed of the Lord. We're going back into the music. Let's praise the Lord for He's worthy to be glorified. Because He lives, I can face tomorrow. Because He lives, all fear is gone. Because I know He holds the future, and life is worth. Living just me. 
So many times in life we get burdened down with our trials and the burdens of our trials and our situations. So many times we're looking around at the condition of our nation and the moral decline that we've seen happen and basically it seems the attitude is, who cares? Nobody really cares. I'm glad this morning I can stand in this place and to declare to you that we've got a God who holds us. Amen. And we've got a God who does care. And really, honestly, I'm being very sincere from my heart. All that really matters is the fact that He lives. But I'm glad it's not a period or an explanation point there. I'm glad dot, dot, dot. Because He lives, I live also. I live in Him because He lives in me. I've got purpose and I've got meaning and I've got God on my side and I've got every reason today to praise the Lord and to shout the victory. Oh, our hearts are heavy at times and all the struggles that we face and the hard times and decisions we make and the losses that we encounter. But really, all that matters is the fact that He lives. And because He lives, you've got a hope that no circumstance or nothing in this world and not even the devil himself can take from you today. You've got hope in God. See, today, all that really matters is He lives. And we're here to magnify and worship His name together. Let's do it again. Because He lives. I think about the cross that he endured laying down his life unselfishly and how his suffering and I can rest assured in his saving grace yeah when he took our place took the scars, felt the pain, suffered loss so we could gain this precious life, this precious love that we are feeling. He took our sin in the fall, left his hope here for us all. Jesus took the scars and left us with the healing. Left us with the healing. There is no brokenness that we could ever bring that would ever be too much for Him to bear. They don't, no. they don't mean a thing anymore. Oh, that's what he was dying for. He took the scars, felt the pain, suffered a loss so we could gain this precious life, this precious love that we are feeling. Took our sin, yeah. 
from the fall. Let this hope here for us all. Jesus took the scars and left us with the healing. Yeah. There was beauty in the tragedy. In his death we found new birth. It was unrelenting love for every soul. Felt the pain, suffered a loss so we could gain this precious life, this precious love that we are feeling. He took our sin and the fall, he left his hope here for us all. Jesus took the scars and left us with the healing. Jesus took the scars and left us with the healing, yeah, he left us with the healing, Jesus left us with Today, uh, turn to the book of Matthew, chapter 5. Only three verses today. We're talking about a single, well, this morning in Sunday school I talked about satisfied, <laughs> uh, a single word title. And the title for the message this morning is a single word title blessed. Blessed. We use the phrase or term blessed, but we kind of use it out of context. We talk about we're blessed, but we're not walking with God. Now, how can you be blessed and not walk with God? I just don't believe it. We, we talk about the, the things that are happening in our life, and, you know, we don't count our blessings. We don't name them one by one. We don't recognize that every good gift and every perfect gift comes from God. We don't absorb into our spirit the leadership of God, that he will direct your paths and he will lead you in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Blessed. And today, really, how blessed are you? Well, preacher, I've got a roof above my head. I've got gas in the car. I've got food on the counter. I've got this and I've got that. No, how really? I mean, let's talk about really how blessed you are. Not what you got in the cupboard. And not what's motoring you around and not what's covering your head. I'm more in, in, in inclined to lean to the point of what's inside of you that's bringing the blessing to your spirit in your life. Blessed of the Lord. Now Jesus was very interested and very demanding about the fact of being blessed. As a matter of fact, you read through the pages of God's word. The first psalm in the Bible is what? Blessed is the man. And folks, today, we can be blessed of God. We're living in a time and a season that things are tough and seemingly the world's going to hell in a handbasket. And, you know, we Christians are walking around with the mully grubs and we're hiding under the pews and we won't stand up for the truth. And we're thinking, well, you know, life is just horrible. No, for the born again, blood washed, living for Jesus life, it's a blessing. Amen. And it's God's desire that you be blessed today. Jesus said, and seeing the multitude, he went up into a mountain. You know, you need to underscore that word mountain because something happens here. And when he was set, that means when he sat down, his disciples came unto him. He opened his mouth. Hallelujah. You got a mouth, say praise the Lord. Praise you ought to use it more often for that purpose than anything else. And he opened his mouth and taught them saying simply this. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Father, we pray today that you will saturate our spirits with your power, your might, and your miracles. We pray today that you will overwhelm us with you. We pray today that, Lord, we will focus our attention upon the blesser who brings blessings to his people. 
But those blessings come today with the condition that we've got to seek the Lord while he may be found. Seek the Lord and live for him. Serve the Lord and be faithful. Help us to be today in a position that we can be blessed, but just not to receive the blessing, but Lord, then to give back praise to you and to share the blessings with others. May you today move on our hearts. May the Spirit of the Lord have freedom in this message today. Lord, may we today listen intently today with our spirit, our heart, our mind, and may we today be receptive to your leadership and your speaking to our hearts today. And we declare, Lord, have your way. And we'll say to God be the praise in Jesus' name. And all God's servants said, praise the Lord. Lord. I believe one of the greatest platforms that was used to deliver the earth-shattering messages to the world You find this so typically on a mountain. You look at, here's Moses, he meets the Lord on Mount Sinai, and God speaks and God gives him the Ten Commandments. You look at other occasions and places and times, and of course, God spoke to Noah, and then the the ark rested on Mount Ariat. You look at the Mount of Transfiguration. You look at different things that are contained in the pages of God's Word, and you find that these mounts or mountains have significance because things happen there. And so the, the, the words of Jesus flew like arrows as he proclaimed God's message to the people that pierced the hearts of men. And I'm glad to tell you today, those same heart-piercing messages today are still applicable to our heart and our life. They will pierce our heart. They will show us what, is, what our life is about. They will show us our fall, shortfalls. And it will show us today who's the answer for our life. Oh, today, oh, we need a heart-piercing touch from God that will bring us to the place of recognizing who our God is. Amen. Not only will these things bring us to the place of our hearts being pierced with the truth of God's Word, but also it will be like a waterfall that will bring a season of refreshing to your spirit. Amen. Oh, I tell you, when you've been with the Lord and you've tasted of Him and you've walked in His presence and you've felt His touch and you've listened to His Spirit speak to you, you've felt the refreshing that only God can bring. Amen. Oh, He'll touch you in such a magnificent way that your life will never be the same. Amen. God used mountains or used the mountain to do some extraordinary and some of the greatest works that are contained in the pages of God's Word. And in Matthew chapter 5, God delivered a message of divinely crafted words that leads us to the gates of heaven, to our eternity to be with Him. Amen. Uh, I'm glad I got a better place to go. I don't know about you. I'm glad this world is not my home. I'm glad that, thank God, because His Word has pierced my heart and because I've received the refreshing waters that He has provided, I'm glad today to know that one day I'm going to walk into that glorious city of God. I'm going to walk on a street of gold. I'm going to see a mansion that He has prepared for me. I'm going to behold His glory, and I'm going to worship and praise Him, just not for 10,000 years, but forevermore. Amen. Hallelujah. That's the God whom we serve. The Beatitudes are, I would c- categorize them as diamonds that, that point to a light that is filled with joy unspeakable and full of God's glory for our lives. Amen. Oh, listen, when Jesus stood on the mount and, and gave these eight pillars that we call the Beatitudes or the attitudes that we should be, he was talking about what his kingdom was built upon. If you're building your life on this world, I'm telling you, your life is going to crumble just like this world is. But if you're building on the right foundation, on Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. Amen. The Word of God reminds us, He said, Upon this rock I will build my church, and the very gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. Thank the Lord today that we can be built on the right foundation. Thank God we're not controlled by the world. Thank God we're not belonging to the devil. Thank God we've been delivered by the power of the cross and the power of the blood and the power of the name that is above every name. Amen. Thank God we have such a God on our side. Amen. Knowing this today, these, these attributes and these things that God is speaking to us, these beatitudes, they have stood the test of time. They have been attacked in every element. 
They have been attacked by Satan. They've been attacked by the world. They've been attacked by the demons of hell. But you know what? These beatitudes or these attitudes that we should be, they still stand to the glory of God. If you will employ these things in your life, when all the dust is settled, when everything has been said and done, you'll be standing on the Lord's side. Amen. Because they will give you the strength to prevail and the strength today to go through every situation of adversity that you can face in life. Amen. They are unsurpassed in their supernatural power because what they do, they pour God's power into your life that you can be powerful for Him. See, today it's not about you being powerful. It's about Him being powerful in you. Amen. That's about that leadership of God. Hallelujah. So Jesus, the greatest life that has ever lived. Amen. We talk about great people and we talk about great attributes and we talk about great qualities and we talk about great things. But I'm going to tell you there's none equal to Jesus today. None is equal to him in the fact of what he has done and proclaimed the greatest message on the Sermon on the Mount. And thank God today we can take that Sermon on the Mount and we can involve it in our life that we can be mightily used for the kingdom of God. Amen. Now contained in the Beatitudes or these attitudes that we should be today is the way to receive God's power. See, people want power in life. They want power to get. They want power to, to reign. They want power to have prestige. They want power in every element of their life. They want power in their job, power in their home, power even what they drive. Amen. Everybody wants power. But I'm going to tell you, there's no power like God's power. And you shall receive God's power, the power of the Holy Spirit when He comes upon you. Amen. And when you surrender your life to Him, let me tell you what, that's what these Beatitudes are all about. It's the releasing of God's power into your life and that you can receive it. I received it, thank God. Listen, 2nd of February, 1975, Jesus Christ came into my heart and my life and saved my soul. Preacher, you remember what happened? I remembered what happened like it was just a moment ago. I remember me crying out unto the Lord and bringing all the baggage and the bondage of my sin and laying it at the foot of the cross. And thank God he took everything and he cast those things from me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And my friend, not only did he cast them from me, but then he gave me something that was far better. Those sins were drawing me down to the very depths of hell. They were pulling and tugging on my soul. They were bringing about destruction and disgust into my life. But brother, that day when the blood of Jesus Christ blotted out my transgressions and washed away my every iniquity. I want you to know the power of God came upon me. And brother, let me tell you what, I didn't have to wait for some church to send me a confirmation letter to tell me that I'd gotten it. I knew what I'd got. I went down a pauper, a beggar, in rags. But thank God he brought me up in the power of Almighty God. And I'm a child of the King. And the devil can't do nothing about it today because I belong to the King of all kings. His power came into my heart and my life. This same God will change your life today because you can receive His power. Amen. Not only does it contain to receive God's power, but also today you can retain God's power. Amen. Let me tell you, He didn't come in to move out, brother. He came to stay. Amen. That's why Paul said you are sealed. Sealed by the power of the Holy Ghost. Sealed by the blood. Sealed by the name. Amen. Sealed unto the day of redemption. Every surgeon in the state of Virginia and UVA and Duke University and any other leading hospital, they can't cut out of me what Jesus has put in me. Amen. Amen. I'm so glad today I'm a child of the King. And I'm glad not only have I received His power, I'm glad I retain His power. And the reason I retain His power is because I involve the power of this Word in my life every day. Amen. To sit in the early hours of the morning to read God's Word and to receive what God has said. Oh, I'll tell you what, just reading through the pages of God's Word, opening up God's book and letting it speak to you and blessing you and the power of God being poured. I mean, bless God. Let me tell you what, this is a power drink. Amen. People are looking at these power drinks and amen, they're getting the heart rates up and they're drinking nothing but liquid, uh, not, not, not cocaine, but they're drinking liquid, uh, what's that stuff that's in your soft drinks? Caffeine. Amen. You're drinking all that stuff and it's giving you a buzz and your eyes are bulging from your head. You look like Roger Rabbit and, and you're just running like you're going crazy and you're burning your heart up. Well, let me tell you what, friend. 
I'm drinking from a different fountain. I'm drinking from a fountain that doesn't have side effects. Hallelujah. Let me thank you, Lord, for what you've done for me. Because this fountain is a fountain that's drawn from Emmanuel's veins. And when you taste of the Lord and see how good he is, oh, what a difference he'll make in your life. Amen. And you retain this power. And this power lives and it breathes in you. It's in everything that you do. It's in every step that you take. It's in every word that you say. It's in every thought that you think. It's in every action and every deed that you do. That's the power of God that you retain in you because he came in and he's not moving out. Amen. Hallelujah. Give the Lord some praise. You're too quiet. So you receive the power. You retain this power. But also, it's just not put in you to stay in you. It's put in you to be released in you. Amen. To receive, to retain, and to release. Amen. You know what some of you are speaking to your problems? Defeat. You're speaking defeat. I don't find any word in this Bible when you speak to problems that brings defeat. I find this word, when it's released in your life, it will bring the power of God to cancel out what you're facing. I found that this word will change you. It will change your circumstances. It will change what you're in and what you're going through. Amen. Are you tired of living like you are? Are you tired of the same old stuff? Are you tired of the same old rut that you're in? Well, let me tell you what. Here's how to get out of it. Receive the power of God. Retain the power of God. Release the power of God. And you'll find your life has been turned upside down by the power of Almighty God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I feel like just having a shouting spell. I feel like just going outside and having a shouting spell. Amen. Neighbors will probably call 911 say some preacher out in the middle of the street, he's lost his mind. Amen. Is that that raising his hands and shouting? Amen. He's out running up and down the parking lot, running up and down the streets, praising God. Amen. Amen. Well, I tell you what, I did lose my mind. Amen. I lost it all for Jesus. Hallelujah. And I'm probably today, I'm in my right mind because today I'm in the mind of Christ. And he said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Amen. Glory. Preach on, son. Amen. Every word in Matthew 5 is impregnated today with the meaning that God wants us to get in our spirit. Jesus was standing in a massive crowd there at the Sea of Galilee. And there you find something that's happening. I can imagine I've been to the Sea of Galilee and I've stood there. And you know, you say, yeah, but Jesus wasn't there. Oh, yes, he was actually. He was actually there. Because he's with me. Amen. Amen. But can you imagine Jesus is on the scene and he's getting ready to speak and to teach and to preach and to give uh, meaning to the lives of people. And you can just probably feel that Jesus is coming. Oh, Jesus is coming. Oh, the Lord is coming. And my friend, he did come. And there was an expectancy because people were expecting something to occur, something to happen. And let me give you the proof of that today. Because people wanted to hear the words of the miracle man. Amen. And if you look back in Matthew chapter 4, the scripture says this, and I quote, and his fame went throughout all Syria. In other words, his track record, his resume was following him. It even preceded him in every place that he was going. You say, well, preacher, they didn't have internet and they didn't have uh, cell phones. Man, they had word of mouth. And they had a way to get the word out. Amen. And thank God, you know, even with all the modern gadgets that we've got today, we ought to use them for the kingdom of God, shouldn't we? Amen. But here's the situation. And his fame went throughout all of Syria. And they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with divers. Now listen, this is not Jacques Cousteau. We're not talking about divers here. We're not talking about going down in the ocean to the Titanic. We're talking about divers, trouble diseases, difficulties, problems with divers diseases and torments. There's a lot of folk in this world right now. There's a lot of folk in today, this town that's tormented. Amen. And those which were possessed with devils. Well, let me just put a little sidebar here issue for you. If you don't have Jesus Christ in your heart and your life, you are possessed with the devil. But I'm glad when Jesus comes in, the devil moves out. Amen. And those which were lunatic, and those that had the palsy, 
And listen to what happened here in these next four words. And, and is a conjunction, and he healed them. Amen. Good God Almighty. I'm glad he's still a healing God. Oh, I'm still glad he's in the room right now. I'm glad he can touch you. I don't care what you got. I don't care what the doctor said. I don't care today what the prognosis may be. There is a God who today can do the miraculous. There's a God today that can heal you just in the name of Jesus and through the power of the blood of our Savior on the authority of the Word. Here's a God that will heal you. Amen. And he healed them. Come on now, you're going to get something here. And he healed them. Amen. And he healed them. Yeah, but pastor, the doctors have said. Which doctor are you listening to? Well, they've only given so much of this, so much time, so much of that, so much of that, done everything. I hate it when I hear them say, well, we've done everything that we can do. You're right. You've done everything that you can do, but you can't do what he can do. Because he can do all things exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Amen. I'm here to tell you right now, somebody sitting in this church right now needs today a healing from some disease. Maybe you're not a lunatic. Maybe you don't have palsy. Maybe you don't have disease. But maybe today you've got trials. You've got troubles. You've got problems. You've got pains. You've got difficulties. Let me tell you what the power of Jesus' name today can heal you. And he healed them. That same Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And there's not, nothing too hard for our God. Amen? Amen. 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 He can heal you. The Romans were observing because they were afraid of Jesus. He was a threat. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, they were concerned about Jesus because he was going to distract from their control and their power over the people. Let me tell you what, man. I'm not controlled by anything or anybody except one, and his name is Jesus. Amen. People were there. They were looking for a Messiah that would bring the deliverance that they were desirous of. And the word had spread, Jesus is coming. Can you imagine the undercurrent of the talk from community to community and place to place and house to house and place of gathering? Jesus is coming. Did you hear? Hey, he was over in the other county the other day, and somebody said they saw him heading in our direction. Jesus is coming. Jesus and his disciples came with the power of God in their lives. Amen. He didn't come in panic. He came knowing his God, his Father, was with him. Amen. And in these days that we're living in today that are concerned and encircled with depression and difficulty and dilemma, we need to know today the power of God today is to be on the church. The church is not powerful today is because it's departed from the source of power and that's God in the Holy Spirit. The church should be the most powerful force on this planet. The church should be standing today true and tall today, not hiding under pews, but today lifting up the mighty name of our mighty God. We follow today not someone who's defeated. We follow the champion of the cross. We follow the day with the one that has defeated sin, Satan, death, hell, and the grave. Amen. We serve a mighty God. You hear what I'm saying? I said we serve a mighty God. Amen. Praise God. Jesus, the Son of the living God, knew how to communicate life to people. And he did, and he did it through the power of his words. And in his omnipotence today, Jesus saw their needs. He saw their suffering. He saw their struggles, their anxieties. He saw their fears, their worries, and their pains. He saw everything that they were going through. And just as Jesus saw what they needed and what was needed in their lives, he also sees what you're facing today across this church and those who are watching by television and listening by radio today. He sees every heartache. He knows every worry that you're in. He knows every struggle that you're facing today. And he is the God today who is concerned about his own. When nobody else cares, I'm glad somebody by the name of Jesus still cares. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He is the God who collects all your tears and puts them in tear bottles and holds them before his throne as a constant remembrance of what you're going through, that he will lift you up and he will give you the help and the strength that you need. He is our refuge, our strength, and our very present help in time of trouble. Hallelujah. But I'm glad one day, glory to God, he's going to pour out the tear bottles. Amen. 
because our faith will have become sight and we will stand before this mighty God of heaven, this creator, this giver of salvation, this provider, this helper, our hope that we have in him today. One day he's going to pour out all the tear bottles for we shall see him face to face. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. He is this God today who can carry you through every storm that you'll ever face in life. He is the God who calls the stars by name. He even has them numbered. He even knows how many hairs are on your head. He is the God today that sees your heartache, and He just not only sees it, but He's right there in the midst of your life to deliver you from those things. He is the God today that can save your soul. And let me tell you what, to reject Jesus Christ today is, is an eternity in hell. And let me tell you what, you can say what you want to say. It's a bad decision. And it's a decision you will live with for eternity. And if you're sitting in this church this morning and you don't know that you're saved, I would suggest today to you that you better get to an altar of repentance. You better cry out for mercy. And I'm so glad today we serve a God that when we call out in mercy, mercy shows up. Amen. He will forgive your every sin. He will blot out your every transgression. He will wash every stain from your life. He will lift you up. He will save your soul. He will deliver you. And He will name you by name and call you his child. Amen. Amen. It's the power of our God. Amen. Give the Lord some praise. He is God. As I just pointed out, He's the God that can heal you. He's the God that's here right now to change your life, change your mind, and even change your eternity. But you've got to come to Him. Why are you living the way you're living? And why are you staying the way you are when God's got a better way? Amen. Amen. You need to get out of the attitude today that you, you know, well, I was born to be blessed. It only is going to happen when you get into a walking relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. See, hear this. Faith is not believing God can. Faith is believing God will. Amen. See, we, we just think, well, God can. I just hope, whew, I sure will be glad. God will. God will. What do you believe God to do in your life? Well, I just kind of hope. See, that's a word that you use in a negative sense that actually should have positive meaning in your life. We take the positive, the positive words that God gives us and we turn them into negative words that today rob us of what God wants to do in our life. You've got blessed hope. You've got hope in Christ. You've got hope in the cross. You've got hope in heaven. You've got hope in the word. You've got hope today in a God who will never leave you nor forsake you nor fail you. Amen. See, when you use the word in the right connotation, it takes on a totally different meaning, doesn't it? Amen. You're not being blessed because you won't believe. I said you're not being blessed because you won't believe. Well, I hope so. I sure do hope I get lucky. You're talking wrong language. You're speaking today the words of the, of the world. When you should be speaking today the word of God. You won't believe. Have you forgotten that God said... With him, all things are possible to the person that will believe on the Lord. Amen. Not only that, but not only that, but today you won't be, you won't believe, and you won't serve the Lord. Well, God, I just don't have time. You better find some time, friend. Because one day you're gonna stand before this awesome God. And you try telling him. Lord, I just didn't have, I sure wish you'd have put 36 hours in a day instead of, you'd have wasted that just like you've wasted 24. Amen. You won't serve the Lord. And you won't be, you're not being blessed because you won't surrender your life to Him. You're walking on the outer perimeters of a relationship. Oh, you towed a Bible and you got all the right language, but you are not walking in relationship and closeness and experiencing God in your life every day. You know what? You're dangerous to the kingdom of God. Because you're not magnetizing people and bringing them to Christ. You're repelling people and pushing them away. Because you're given a double standard. You're trying to live like the world and trying to live like Jesus. You can't do it. You can't serve two masters. Either you're going to love the one and hate the other. You're either going to walk straight and walk for God or you're going to walk the ways of the world. Now, you've got to choose who you're going to serve. You can't be a Christian on Sunday and live like hell the rest of the week. Amen. I said amen. I said amen. You've got to get right with God. And you've got to stay right with God. It's just not coming to church hitting and all, oh, God, oh, Lord, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I feel better now. I had a good crying spell at the altar with Jesus. 
Please just make me feel so good. You go right back out and you live that same sorry lifestyle you've been living. And you make your way back and you get to the end of your rope. And that's when you say, throw down the rope, Jesus. Help. What are you going to do the day he doesn't throw down the rope? What are you going to do when the rescuer has already come and you're still in the mess that you're in? Don't get quiet when the preaching's getting good. Don't jump out the frying pan just because the heat's being turned up. Stay in there. Let the grease pop on you a little bit. Amen. Why don't you just go on and get right and live for God and stay right? Why don't you start being the testimony that God's called you to be? Why don't you live at the cross and live for God and serve the Lord and be faithful and be dependable and be loyal to the kingdom of God? Amen. Amen. Stop being a halfway Christian. Stop bringing reproach and shame on the name above every name. God doesn't like it. And I'm going to tell you right now, one day he's going to pull out your scorecard and you're not going to like your score. Let me hurry up and finish here. The scripture says today when he was set, meaning when he positioned himself with the people to speak, he sat down and he sat down because he is the judge. He is the righteous judge. And looking back through the Bible, you'll find the judgment hand of God in every situation. It happened in Noah's day, Solomon, Gomorrah's day. It happened in... Uh, the days of Moses, it happened and it's happening right now and it's going to happen in America. You mark my word down. You cannot abort innocent babies and get by with it. You can't choose what they call alternate lifestyles, which is nothing but an abomination unto the name of God in same-sex marriage. God is not honored in that. He did not create man and man or woman and woman to marry and, and intermingle with each other. He created a man, he created a woman and I tell you what, there's no better relationship. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't want, I'm not even going to say it. I will say it. I don't want no man holding my hand. And I don't want no man kissing me either. Keep your hands off of me. Because I'll hurt you. Amen. But preacher, you're supposed to love them. Oh, I love that soul, but I hate their sin. I hate any sin today. And you've got to get to the point that you hate sin and stop today saying, well, it's just the culture that we're living in. And it's just the way. And we changed all the names to take away the, the, the sting of the, of the sin that it brings. And we try to minimize it today. We better start speaking the truth. Amen. Now, I'm going to tell you something, folks. If you're going to be blessed of God, you've got to bow at the feet of Jesus and you've got to serve him. Amen. Have we forgotten today Psalm 33 and 12? I preached on it here a few weeks ago. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Amen. Now, America is a godless and living in godless conduct today. And, it, and it's going to find out one day the judge is still on the throne. And I'm not talking about Judge Judy or Judge this or Judge that and all this riffraff you watch on television. I'm talking about the big judge, the righteous judge. God is the judge. Amen. Jesus sat down because he was the king. Paul said, and he raised him up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places with Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. This raising up today, let me tell you what. It's just not future. It's present tense right now. Today, if you're a child of God, you're in the presence of God, the holiness of God right now in this room. Well, preacher, I, don't, I didn't know that he was here. Well, if he's not here, what in the name of God are we here for? Amen. Amen. Don't forget, if you're saved, you are a child of God. You've been purchased today by the Lamb of God, which takes away the sins of the world. God wants to bless you in his presence. Hallelujah. Amen. I mean, I'm glad Jesus told it like it is. Amen. America is deprived today of the message of God because churches and pulpits will not tell it like it is. Well, we've got to be politically correct. We've got to choose our word. Preacher, you really need to start choosing your words a little bit more correctly with less impact and less punch. What do you want? A little puppet? What do you want? A little poodle toting? Pacifier sucking? Milk toast, limp wristed, and not tell it like it is? Well, that's not what you get with me. I believe in telling it like it is. Amen. Amen. Tell, tell it like it is. The soul that sinneth shall surely die. Amen. Tell it like it is today. Listen, 
We, we, we've got to stop comforting the today ourselves. You, we, we're so concerned about cuff, comforting today ourselves. We need, yes, we do need to comfort the afflicted, but we also need today to afflict the comforted that are in sin. Amen. Tell it like it is. Hell's hot. Heaven's sweet. Tell it like it is. Sin will cost you a whole lot more than you want to pay, and it will cripple your life, and it will destroy you, and it will kill you. Amen. Tell it like it is. God sent His only begotten Son to die on the cross for our sins and to purchase our lives. Thank God. Tell it like it is. Jesus died on that Roman rugged cross one day. He was buried in a real tomb. It was called the tomb of Arimathea, of Joseph of Arimathea. He rose again on the third day. I like that, don't you? Amen. He ascended into heaven, and He said, this same Jesus that you see going up will come again in like manner hallelujah thank God he's coming again and thank God he will forgive your sins thank God he will encourage the broken hearted thank God he will heal the sick thank God we can still tell it like it is that he will lift up the fallen he will mend the broken hearted you can tell it like it is thank God one glorious hallelujah morning the king of all kings the lord of all lords is coming back in power and great glory amen Rejoice because you can tell it like it is. All right, let me finish. A couple more thoughts. So we go back to Matthew 5 and we find Jesus said, basically in verses 3 through 11, he said, blessed, blessed, blessed. He said that 11, uh, said that uh, in those verses continuously, 3 through 11, he said, blessed. That's how he began the verse. And, and each step in the Beatitudes is a step into a bigger, greater blessing of God. See, we can't get past the blessed. We can't get past today to even get into the relationship. The blessing of God, hear this, is the supernatural impartation today of the power of God into the human life by the spoken word of God. How do I get God's power? How do I get blessed? Here it is. If you don't have this, you don't have nothing. But if you've got this, you've got everything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory! You were not just born to be blessed. You were born again to be blessed. Amen. God sends us blessings today that we can't even contain. You can't bottle it up. God wants to put today, put you in the position, promised land. Oh, wait a minute. Promised land's heaven, isn't it? No, promised land's right now. Amen. God wants you in the promised land right now. He wants you living for Him. God's grace today has no limit. His love has no measure. His compassions has no boundary. And thank God His mercies are renewed every morning because great is His faithfulness to us. Amen. And isn't it interesting, those words came from a book of lamenting by Jeremiah in Lamentations, where basically lamenting means sorrow. God brings out a sorrow. He brings a shout. Amen. Jesus is the lifter of your head. He today is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the abundant life. He is the way, the truth, and the life today. And grasp what Isaiah said. His name shall be called Wonderful Counsel, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Amen. He is the friend that will stick closer than a brother. The Lord is my rock. Oh, listen to what David said in Psalm 18. The Lord is my rock and my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler, the horn of my salvation, and my high tower. Amen. And I believe it's time to stop getting defeated today about your burdens that you're facing, hallelujah, and start getting excited about the blessings that God wants to pour out in your life. God will take you today from not enough to more than enough. Every week I get calls from people, preacher, I'm just going through, and I understand people go through things. But understand, we serve a God who's more than enough. Amen. David said, I once was young, now I'm old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken nor seed begging bread. Amen. Amen. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created him male and, male and female created he them. And listen to what he says also. And God blessed them. Amen. Throughout the Bible, God's people spoke God's word and they were what? Blessed. Abraham spoke and God blessed him. You know what? The same God that was the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is the same God whom we serve today. Amen. God wants you to start breaking through to a blessing that he has for your name. God blessed Adam and Eve with three commands. One, he said, be fruitful and multiply. Folks, be fruitful and multiply does not include abortion and homosexuality. Because two men and two women can't have a baby. I mean, come on. That is about as unnatural as it gets. 
and abortion, thousands of babies being aborted every day. I am sorry, and my heart was broken about what happened in Paris, France, but I haven't heard one American say anything about the thousands of children that are being aborted every day by these murderers in abortion clinics that are ripping babies out of wounds of mothers and destroying their life if they never had a chance. That's an abomination unto God. And if we don't stop it, God's going to judge this nation. Not only that, he said, subdue. He said, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil days. And then take dominion. Why are you crawling under the pew when God said, take dominion? So blessed. From the Sermon on the Mount, we find the Beatitudes. Contains a revelation of God's principles today for the righteousness that he wants to involve in our life. Blessed. That is what God wants to be in your life. Blessed. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. And David goes through in that particular psalm, Psalm 103. You ought to read it today and read about what he does for you. He forgives all your sins, your iniquities, your transgressions. He heals your body. He crowns you with loving kindness and tender. My God in heaven, here's a God that wants to bless you. Can you stay in the pew and stay like you are? Or are you going to come to the place where the blessings are? Come to the God who wants to bless your life today. Thank God. Bless. Come to the fountain. Filled with Emmanuel's veins. And the blood that was drawn from his veins. That will bless your life. Amen. Come and exchange today your struggles. For his blessings. Come and exchange your sickness. Your situations. Your trials. Your heartaches. Your disappointments. Cast them down and take up the cross that comes with the blessing. Hallelujah. It's at the cross where you will find the presence of God. He's here right now. He's going to be across this altar to change your life today. Do you know him as your Savior? If not, why not? When are you? What are you waiting for? Oh, some other time, preacher. If you haven't named the name of Jesus and received it into your heart and your life, you're dying, you're going to hell. Let me tell you a little quick story, and I'm through. Friday morning, we left driving back from Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. We was coming up I-40, which, of course, merges into I-81. We're going along, and traffic is kind of thick, and we're cruising along doing 75 miles an hour, five over the speed limit. And uh, don't tell Jane Martin. She'll tell the police on me. Amen. But anyway, I'm just kidding. And we come up on something that had just happened seconds before. Now, you're doing 75, 80 miles an hour on an interstate, and there's cars on your left, cars on your right, cars in front of you, and cars behind you. It's not always the most conducive situation for driving. It's not like driving down Main Street, Lynchburg, Virginia doing 25 miles an hour. And you can hit your brakes and avoid a pedestrian. This car had hit this big, huge deer. It spun that car around and put it over on the side of the road, and the whole front and side of that car was stripped off of that car, just like if you would take it and just rip it off of it. If we had been a few moments sooner... That deer could have been mine. And God knows, I don't need no more accidents. <laughs> I take my word, and I don't need any more deer. I'm so paranoid, I guess I shouldn't be, but when you've hit, when they run into the side of you, <laughs> it gets a little concerning, you know what I'm saying? But the fact is this. I looked at that, and I thought, those people could have been killed in that car today. Because I don't know if you've ever hit a deer, but let me tell you what, it's, not hitting, it's not like running over a twig in the road. It's like hitting an object, and it's just like if you slammed into a car and sometimes even worse. The people were out of the car. They were okay, thank the Lord. But it flashed across my mind. We never know from day to day, hour to hour, second to second, when our soul will be required of us and that we will have to face God. You better make sure you're saved this morning. And you better also make sure today that you're walking with God because we are just this close away. 
It's not going to sound like that. It's going to have far more majesty in my little frail voice. But only the believers will hear that voice in that day. And in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we shall be caught out of this world and stand before a mighty, righteous God. See, your time's right now. So why don't you get to the altar and tell it like it is and come today that God can bless you and meet your every need. Fathers, we stand to our feet. I pray right now you'll move on hearts and lives.